My name is Terrence and I am 15 years old. Growing up, I've always been aware that if we don't become active about taking care of the planet, there might not be a planet for future generations. I wanted to make this film to understand what actions people can take to prevent that from happening because the things we use can be harmful to the earth. If we start recycling, we will help ourselves and the planet. Uh, we started recycling in 1987 was when uh, the Recycling Act came into effect and I've been recycling since. Uh, it was very important. It took a lot of stuff that could be remade into toys and it brought it back out into a lot of different products. One of the biggest things is we're running out of room and you know recycling actually pays for itself. Uh, the biggest part of it is you know you pay for garbage again and you don't pay for recycling. You get paid for recycling and it's it's a big part of the environment saving the planet. So I think that we have to respect the planet and, uh, and take and uh, go ahead and reuse the resources that we can. And you can make money from these things as well which is always a good thing. You can recycle at you know local um, local they call them Dump is not the most friendly word, I was like, but recycling centers where they will actually, you know, give you, say, five cents to a glass bottle, five cents to an aluminum can, and that all adds up. My first saving account was actually based on recycling. If you can find ways to take out the amount of plastic that you use a day and replace that with reusable glass, if you can find a way to use um, less paper or more recyclable paper, and you can find ways to commit to um, recycling uh, various items, then that's your commitment to the earth. I love coming home to this place. When I first came to look at the apartment, I knew, yeah, this is the kind of thing that makes me want to come home to. It's beautiful. The tenants and stuff have a consciousness about um, reuse, reducing, and recycling, so to speak, that you are definitely um, have the privilege to live in a place that you can breathe clean air, there's no non-toxic paints, um, that is sustainable products that are used to have created the building, the water supply is balanced and measured out in a certain way, the lighting is amazing. They're on some type of sensor, but they're energy efficient, I definitely know that, so you're only using the max of what's needed. And we do our best as tenants to use a clean green product. This is called the trash, but I have to go through this now and take out the things that should have been put in recycling. And legitimately, a lot of what is in here is trash and should be here, but a lot of these things can be recycled. Here are my favorite paper plates again. I love these because they've already been something else once before. And now they're gonna get broken down and turned into something all over again. It's like reincarnation. I feel like I'm reincarnating these things because they just used to be something else. So, I went through the trash and these are things that could have gone into the recycling and should, so they're going to. There's an old adage that says, you know, you know who someone is when you look in their trash. That's very true. Um, if you look at the different ways, that, the different um, amounts of garbage that you produce in one day and times that by eight million, that's waste um, on varying degrees that everyone's creating for New York City. So obviously huge amounts of waste that affect all of us. The sheer amount of paper that we throw out in my place of work is just heartbreaking when it should be shredded and recycled. And uh, another great tragedy to me is the amount of food that we throw out. We do work with the homeless and we run a food pantry for people who have a hunger and have a need. But we have functions all week long where they're is lunch, dinner, reception, coffee and cookies, what have you. We throw out heartbreaking amounts of food, and so does the entire city. I mean, we're not alone there. I won't take any kind of carry out that has to be given me in a, a styrofoam container, because that simply isn't going to break down for thousands and thousands of years because of the content of styrofoam. Um, I think the best way for me to not add to that landfill is simply to refuse styrofoam in my life. Jorn Schroeder is the architect for this, this historical brownstone here on Madison Street. And this is what it looked like before. This is the, the before picture as he regutted and began to restore this brownstone using only naturally sustainable materials that don't harm the environment and 
without getting in the way of the geological structure of this original limestone. All I know is that it is from recycled carpet. So I guess it's pieces before that were done and that they were stored and um, your found it and kept it here and beautified our stairs with it. People who use recycling just don't do it in action. They can make songs about it, they can write about it, they can talk about it. If you talk about it, then not just your friends will hear it, but the whole world will. That's the idea I want to get through through this film, so that the whole world can start recycling in a good manner. When the earth is burning, species decreasing, world needing peace, and the storms increasing. Underdeveloped, they just get fed up, and it's coming to a head. I for an I'm a mind on horizons, my people keep on rising. The time is not to ride in, the world need redefining, realigning, redesigning, being the change we see inside us. Justice, love us, freedom, fight us, cush, camp, realign us. It's our home with the seas, one with the breeze, to reach the breeze, and reach the breeze, one with the seas, one with the breeze, reach the breeze, reach the breeze. A lot of people around me know about recycling. I work for Majora Carter Group, which is a Bronx-based um, green development project consultancy. That just means we work on green projects, and so that's anything that's going to help better the earth and create jobs at the same time. I guess I, guess I feel like we're all one, like we're all part of the trees. I know there's some legends that say the trees are um, spirits, our spirits. Yeah, tra you know, traditionally, if, if a native was going to make a dugout canoe from a tree, you don't just cut it down and make the boat. Like, you have a relationship with the tree. You, you thank it, you recognize its living spirit before you cut it, you know? So. We need to be able to save this place that we live in. Otherwise, sooner or later, it won't be here. My hope is that we as a people can come back together and our kids can be more involved in uh, actually protecting this land. You know, when the Native Americans controlled the, what we call now the United States, we call Turtle Island, we, uh, we pretty much um, lived off the land and we had to learn to respect it. Uh, we never took more than what we needed to. Um, when we used to plant cornfields, we called it maize, we would actually only use it for that season. And the next season we would actually, at the end of that season, we would burn the crops. And then we would let that sit until the following, so two years would go by before we reused it. And that was because we understood that, um, we understood the impact of, of us on the environment. I think the, the whole thought of it, uh, recycling is really an inherent um, gift of, of Native people because we've always essentially thought uh, only take what you can use and only and use all of what you take. So in itself, that's a uh, recycling mantra. Recycling isn't a luxury, it isn't a choice, it's a mandate. We must leave a clean and viable world full of resources to the generations that are going to follow us. It's, it's not really a choice anymore. I would say that recycling is very important to every community. I think that very simple ways that everyone can recycle um, would be one to make sure your paper has been at least 60% recycled. You know, if you bring your own cloth bag that you can get usually for like 99 cents at a lot of these stores, you bring that bag to the store and that's one less bag that's going to go towards the environment, go out to the ocean or a landfill. You have that possibility to get water from the tap, you know, make an effort to do that. You have your filter there as well because at the end of the day, that's what sustainability is all about. How do you make yourself more healthy and also keep your earth healthy as well? I would say that we probably are at a point in time now where we, we need to actually go back to who we were. People see recycling as an effective way to connect with others. They can start organizations such as a cleanup crew or helping a community with its garbage. What we want to do is get people to think about the environment we are a part of the environment and we should learn to take care of it. Investigate of the universes of the planet and of myself.
you I have thoughts of living laws Until I seen the earth spin I'm working, pulling back curtains Till I know shit for certain and it's hurting Sometimes, other times it's like the only thing that I strive for Cause often the struggles what defines or facilitates What is great, obliterates what is fake Illustrates how little of this left of fate Nucleic acid gave you a place to start with Now the world is yours to navigate till you depart And so, what you gonna do with it? World is fucked up or who did it?